Hello everyone, I'm Vaibhav, a third year PhD student from Carnegie Mellon University. Today I'll be presenting our work on millimeter wave full duplex radius. This is a joint work in collaboration with fellow PhD students Susnata, Akshay, Milind and professors Jayanand Parmesh and Swaran Kumar. As more and more people are using wireless devices in their daily professional and personal lives, the wireless data traffic is increasing by almost 50% every year, according to a recently published mobility report by Ericsson in 2020. Wireless researchers have tried to fulfill this increasing demand using a two-pronged approach. One, by either moving to higher and higher frequency bands, which provide wider bandwidths and hence higher data rates or the other by using the existing frequency bands more efficiently and squeezing out more bandwidth from within these bands using a variety of spectrum reuse techniques. In this work, we try to combine the best of both these approaches by enabling a spectrum efficient full duplex communication link at higher millimeter wave frequencies. To understand full duplex communication, let us take the example of our daily one-on-one -on -one conversation, where when one person talks, the other person listens. This results in successful transfer of information, and we can say that they are trying to communicate in a half duplex manner. However, if both the people try to talk at the same time, it will only lead to chaos with neither of them understanding what the other is trying to say. This is because they are trying to engage in full duplex communication. In a more formal setting, in half duplex communication, the radio transmits and receives in two, frequency, two different frequency slots at the same time or in two different time slots at the same frequency band. However, in a full duplex communication radio, it transmits and receives at the same time using the same frequency band. This has the potential to increase the throughput by almost two folds. Since a full duplex radio has to transmit and receive at the same time using the same frequency band, it suffers from the problem of self-interference, which is the transmitter signal leaking into its own receiver. The self-interference signal is much, much more powerful compared to the desired signal coming from the other radio. And this, in fact, is the challenge lying in the path of enabling full duplex communication, where one has to cancel this self-interference signal before decoding the desired signal. To cancel the self-interference, we can use the channel model where the self-interference signal is the transmit signal affected by the self-interference channel. The goal is to quickly estimate the self-interference channel and remove its effect from the received signal. While a lot of past work has been done on full duplex at sub six gigahertz frequencies, we focus our attention on millimeter wave frequency bands and demonstrate the first bidirectional full duplex link at 28 gigahertz. Before we dive deeper into the problem of full duplex, let us first understand the basic architecture of a transceiver chain in a radio. In a receiver, the antenna first receives the desired signal, applies suitable antenna gain to it, and then passes this to the antenna analog front. At the analog front, the passband signal is down converted to baseband signal and passed on to the digital front. At the digital front, the pass baseband signal is sampled and then signal processing techniques are applied to recover the decoded bits. In a full duplex transceiver system, the picture is a little different because it has to transmit and receive at the same time and frequency. This results in the self-interference signal leaking through the different components of the receiver chain in a fashion similar to the one described in the half duplex case. Hence, to recover the decoded bits from the desired signal, one has to make sure that 
transmission reception and self interference cancellation happens at the same time keeping the full duplex transceiver architecture in mind let us now look at the problem of full duplex here we will plot the power across time and frequency of different signal components in the radio we start at the bottom with the noise floor which is inherent to any system due to the thermal noise next we have the noise figure which is which characterizes the additional noise that any hardware adds to a system then we have the transmit and receive signals at the radio front end we can see that the transmit signal or the self interference signal in the full duplex scenario is almost 1 million times stronger than the desired signal from the other radio now that we know how strong the self interference signal is let us try and go about cancelling it a naive approach would be to use the digital front to cancel everything because it offers a lot of flexibility in terms of signal processing techniques however before we go about doing that there is an important component that we should understand that precedes the digital front that is the adc the adc is the analog to digital converter and it has a property called the dynamic range which is the range of powers it can sample if we go about trying to cancel everything at digital the limited range of the adc will allow us to capture only the signal within the violet box and the desired signal will not be captured hence trying to cancel everything at digital will not work we need to bring down the signal power so as to allow the adc to capture the desired signal if we have any hopes of recovering the decoded bits if the adc has to capture the desired signal the signal in the green box needs to be cancelled first naturally we can use the preceding blocks of antenna and analog domain to cancel the signal and once the adc can capture the desired signal we can use digital cancellation techniques to cancel the remaining self interference this method of dividing the workload across the different components of the radio transceiver chain is what we will use to achieve the required high power self interference cancellation let us begin our journey with the first stage of antenna cancellation here we will use the signal model exactly similar to the one described earlier where the self interference signal is the transmit signal affected by the self interference channel the goal is to accurately estimate this self interference channel if we look at the self interference signal in the time domain it is essentially a phase shifted sinusoid at the carrier frequency the small wavelength of millimeter wave frequencies coupled with the small element sizes and element separations allows us to introduce a thin metallic strip called the self reflector the goal of the self reflector is to inject a negative copy of the self interference signal to nullify its effect how do we make sure that a negative copy is injected the idea is simple the phase of the sinusoidal reflected wave is proportional to the distance traveled by the wave as we move the self reflector in front of the transmit and receive or antenna the phase of the reflected wave changes and at some position of self reflector l the phases are exactly opposite resulting in destructive addition the goal is to find this appropriate position of the self reflector we implement our self reflector using a thin metallic cable placed on top of a fine grained motion stage to allow free movement to verify if this approach actually works we run an empirical study where we measure the signal quality of different components of the signal by moving the self reflector in front of the transmitter and receiver pair we can see that there are periodic peaks in the sinr which is the signal to interference and noise ratio which show good positions of self reflector 
Another interesting aspect is the green curve, which shows the signal quality of the desired signal coming from the other node. It is not affected much in the presence of the self-reflector. We further show in our paper that for 28 gigahertz, there always exists a self-reflector position within the first one centimeter from the transmitter and receiver antenna plane. What makes the self-reflector unique in the millimeter wave context is that it is only feasible at these small wavelengths. If one tries to replicate the self-reflector at lower frequencies, its size will blow up, making it difficult to implement. We also analyze the effect of antenna separation on the self-interference signal power. To do so, we increase the antenna separation in steps of one centimeter and measure the self-interference power. We see that the self-interference power decreases significantly as the separation is increased. However, we use the minimum possible separation of one centimeter in our implementation for all our experiments which provides us around 30 dB of antenna isolation. To summarize, we achieve 40 dB of self-interference cancellation at the antenna domain. After antenna cancellation, we move on to the next stage of analog cancellation where the residual self-interference signal leaks into the analog receiver chain affected by the residual self-interference channel. A general way of doing self-interference cancellation in the analog domain is to pass a copy of the analog transmit signal through a canceller weight block which contains the estimate of the residual self-interference channel. We then subtract the estimate of the residual self-interference from the actual self-interference to achieve the desired cancellation. The signal model that we use here is similar to the one used earlier where the residual self-interference signal leaking into the analog receiver chain is the analog transmit signal affected by the residual self-interference channel. The goal is to accurately estimate this residual self-interference channel coefficient. To do so, we use a custom RF chip designed at CMU, which helps to quickly estimate the high frequency self-interference. The way the chip estimates the self-interference channel is in an iterative fashion, where during the training phase, we send a training sequence to the transmit chain. This training sequence is sent through an initial arbitrary canceller weight, and we then measure the residual between the actual self-interference and the estimated self-interference, and feed back the result to the canceller weight block in order to modify it depending on whether the residual is high or low, a classic negative feedback system. This cycle is repeated until the optimal weight is found. While live implementation of this iterative process can lead to many cycles, the design of the chip enables us to reduce the search space significantly. To understand how, let us first visualize the different components of the channel on a 1D polar plot. The self-interference channel can be represented by the red vector. The green dotted vector is the desired canceller weight that needs to be set inside the chip. To aid visualization, I will now use the green dotted vector to represent the negative desired canceller weight. Randomly setting the weights will lead to a search space as big as the area inside the yellow circle. However, the chip is so designed to reduce this search space significantly. It does so by dividing its weight setting block into sub blocks of coarse and fine grained weights. To understand how this works, let us use the blue vector to represent the current canceller weight. Our goal is to arrive at the green dotted vector as soon as possible. Starting from an initial position, the current canceller weight is modified in large step sizes to arrive at a ballpark of the optimal weight using coarse grain settings. 
Then we use the fine grained phase and gain control weights to arrive at the optimal desired value. Once the optimal desired weight has been set inside the chip, we can use a copy of the transmit signal to achieve the required self interference cancellation. To summarize, we achieve almost 18 dB of analog cancellation using the RF cancellation chip. We now move on to the third stage of digital cancellation where the spectrogram of the baseband residual self interference signal looks like the one in the figure shown. The spectrogram is essentially plotting the power profile of the signal across time and frequency using short time Fourier transform. The portions in yellow denote regions of high power and the portions in green and blue denote regions of low power. We observe that the self interference signal is affected by a frequency selective channel. Hence, naively using narrow band self interference cancellation approaches and extending it to wide band would lead to suboptimal cancellation as shown by the pink residual in the figure. We somehow need to find a way to estimate and cancel this frequency selective residual self interference. To cancel the frequency selective self interference signal, we divide our signal into tiny time and frequency chunks and estimate the self interference channel for each of these chunks. Once the self interference channel has been estimated, we use a copy of the transmit signal and perform self interference cancellation at the digital domain. We can see that the yellow portions have been removed and there's a slight greenish blue tinge remaining. However, we also observe that there's some amount of interference still remaining inside the signal. This is because of the hardware distortions that seep into the digital signal. The good thing for us is that these are repeatable across frequency and power and hence can be modeled. We account for these after modeling using a training phase and remove the nonlinear effects. To summarize, we achieve total 26 dB of digital cancellation after linear and nonlinear self interference cancellation. At the end of the three stages of cancellation, we achieve an aggregate 84 dB of total cancellation across the three stages of the radio pipeline. Coming to the implementation, we use a USRP X310 radio as the transmitter to generate an intermediate passband frequency at 1 GHz and 100 MHz bandwidth. This intermediate passband frequency is converted, upconverted to 28 GHz using a custom PRX board. The signal is then sent to the transmitter. From the receiver antenna, the received signal containing the self interference signal goes to the custom RF chip for analog cancellation. After analog cancellation, the passband signal is converted to intermediate baseband signal at the DRX board and sent to the USRP X310 receiver to be sampled followed by digital cancellation. In our first result, we characterize the throughput of our link on a laboratory benchtop setting. We can see that the throughput decreases with distance and we achieve 1.7 times increase in throughput compared to the half duplex link. In the second result, we characterize the goodness of our self interference cancellation by measuring the residual self interference at the two nodes of the link after all the stages of self interference cancellation we can see that th there's always less than 1 dB of self-interference left. To conclude, we present MMFT, which is the first bidirectional full duplex link at 28 GHz. We achieve almost 84 dB of self-interference cancellation, which results in 1.7 times increase in throughput compared to half duplex link. Please visit our lab webpage to learn more about the project.